This video contains mature themes and content that may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. I have a question. Were you Melissa? Melissa, if so, do you think your history with men has anything to do with it and your rejection, promiscuity issues? Um, I have been celibate for six years. Before I met my son's father, I was celibate for most of my adult life. Um, I think people factor in the two year, little years I was polyamorous and classify that as promiscuity. And they also think about the promiscuity I had when I was like a teenager. Because I was like promiscuous when I was a teenager. Um, it was because my stepfather used to molest me, right? And he led me to believe that sex was what women were supposed to do. Like, I was taught that's, that was what we was all good for. I wasn't told by him that... I was valuable. You understand what I'm saying? And then the women in my family would just call me a hoe. You know what I mean? They wasn't, they wasn't explaining anything to me. It wasn't like they was like, oh, let me teach you how to be a good wife, a good mother, a good girlfriend, a good blah, blah, blah. They wasn't teaching me any of that. They was abusive and, you know, mean and ugly towards me. Even from the time I was a little kid, like before I even started having sex on my own, they was mean to me. So. My whole life, like my whole childhood was just a whole bunch of adults misguiding me, like being mean to me, lying to me about shit, telling me I'm supposed to lie. Like my stepfather told me that I needed to always lie. So people, because people wasn't going to believe me anyway. You know what I mean? He was just like, ain't no sense in telling the truth. He was, he was basically just trying to hide what he was doing to me. So I wouldn't tell someone, but I feel like my mother should have known because she used to have to, um, like put Vaseline on my vagina. Cause I kept telling her something was wrong with my vagina. So she would look down there and see that something was wrong with it and just put Vaseline on it. Sometimes I feel like, like I look back at it and I'd be like, did my mom like allow him to do this? And she just was putting Vaseline on my vagina and she saw the scars and she saw the bleeding and shit. And I'm a little kid. And instead of her taking me to the doctors for it, she would just put Vaseline on it. Did she just know he was doing it and just allow it? You know what I mean? Like I have a strained relationship with my mother for a lot of reasons. And it's a lot of trauma associated with that. So Yes, I was molested when I was a kid. And yes, that's partially why I was promiscuous as a teenager. But then when I started getting into ministry and stuff and getting into church and I started to be different with my sexuality and that started, I think that started when I was like six, 15 or 16, something like that. And so for a while I struggled with ministering and my sexuality, trying to juggle it, trying to figure out who I wanted to be. And after a while, like when I turned like 23 or 24, I realized that there was just no way I could be like a minister because I felt like I had done so much with my life already that I didn't feel like it was something I could possibly be doing. You know what I mean? Like, I just felt like it didn't, it didn't match me. You know, it, it didn't being Christian in general was just hard for me to deal with. And that's a whole nother video. But anyway, so yes, I was molested when I was younger. Um, my history with men um, is not as bad as people think. It's I've had guys be bad to me, but I've had guys be good to me. But for the most part, I always had good friendships with guys. Like, I've always been the type of woman that had a male best friend. Like, Gore was my best friend. Y'all don't know Gore because I would talk about Gore a lot. But Sin Gore was my best friend for years. <laughs> people don't know that most of my most of the men that are in my life have been like my best friend and i know their wife and girlfriend and shit like that and we don't have anything romantic or sexual we just real platonic because y'all have to understand i went through a tomboy phase as well i went through a phase where i was just one of the niggas <laughs> so i don't i don't i don't know i don't see men how a lot of other women see men Yes, I've healed from what's happening, what happened between me and my son's father. I still have a lot of healing to go through uh, when I think about uh, the family aspect of it. But as far as romantically, like I'm over that. Like it took me a while to get over the fact that I was broken up with um, 
and I love somebody so much and I thought he was going to get married. I had to get over that part first. But the what's been harder to get over is the fact that he misled my daughter. Like he he was around my daughter. Like a lot of people will forget this about Breeze. He was around my daughter and he was telling him my daughter he was going to marry me. He met my family. He was telling my family he was going to marry me. One of my uncles was like my father figure. He told him he was going to marry me. So it's just like I I have to get over the family aspects of what we were, were with. And the, I have to accept the fact that I'm not the nuclear family that I wanted to be. Not really nuclear, but I wanted to be like married and then have a child. That's what I have to get over, the family part. It isn't the romantic part. All that, I'm over it. Um, the truth is, man, is it for you? Right. Excuse me. You said the truth is that the man who is meant for you don't deserve this baggage. He doesn't. That's why I waited so long. It's been six years. You understand what I'm saying? It ain't like, listen, I decided to be celibate for more than one reason. It wasn't just because I had like this amazing relationship with God. That's the most important. But the second most important thing about this is that I felt like any man that I end up with, he doesn't deserve to deal with the baggage associated with my son's father. And I didn't want to take it out on him. So I was like, I got to heal first. However long it takes, I'm going to heal first. But then after being celibate for such a long time and single, and I tried to date, I think I tried to date, I tried to date a doctor. I dated somebody who, who I went to middle school and high school with a childhood friend. And I just, it just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel comfortable enough for me. You know, so I just, just, I couldn't do it. But anyway, after a while, it just feels better for me to be single. And I was just telling my daughter's father yesterday when we were talking, because me and him cool. You know, me and my daughter's father are always going to be cool. Uh, we were talking last night, and I was telling him um, that I hope my daughter gets married because I want my son to see two people married because he's not going to see me get married because I'm not even going to bother trying to get him stepfather like before. Like, I kept thinking I wanted to do it, but the more I think about it, the more I don't want it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the more I know. 